What's going on guys? This is Mike with you at Chat Gaming and today I want to talk to you a little bit here about the reasons why you should own a Sony PSP in 2018. I picked this console up a little over about a year and a half ago. Yes, I'm a big fan of handhelds. I love the, uh, the PS2, which is basically what this is, a mini version of the PS2. But for some reason, I just decided not to go down the route and pick this up. At the time, I was more into the DS and Source, you know, the Nintendo DS, the DSSP, and all those as well, too, that I actually decided to skip out on this when it first came out. Now, ever since I picked this thing up here, I have had nothing but fun with it. I've been playing this thing, uh, picking this thing up and playing it daily. I play it quite a bit. There are so many great games on this actual device here. A lot more games than what you actually think there is. Basically, any game that was on the PS2, not any game, but most games, they actually made a version um, for the PlayStation Portable here as well, too, whether or not it was a direct port or whether or not it was its own exclusive as well, too. But they actually made quite a few games, and there are actually some great ones, right? Here's just one, for example, this is Twisted Metal Head On. This one is very, very similar to Twisted Metal 2, which is from the original PlayStation, but definitely one of my all-time favorite games on, on the PlayStation as well, too. I love this game so much, and here's what I like about it the most is how a lot of people didn't care for this, but I did like this here. These are like basically their UMDs, Universal Media Discs. So this is what you actually put into the console. Now a lot of people didn't like it because of the fact that when you actually place it in here, um, you know, they're, they're kind of loud. You can actually hear it moving around and everything as well too. So, you know, just like anything else, it was basically reading it. So yeah, so it was nice. This little cassette there went in. So it wasn't a, um, it wasn't an actual, you know, a card or an actual cartridge or nothing like that. It was an actual little mini disc as well too. And like, just like I said, you could hear it going in there and a lot of people didn't like that, but if you can get past that here, then it's definitely pretty cool. I do like it. The quality is great as well, too. It actually does sound well. Now, this here is the 3000 model. Um, there is several different ones. The original 1000 model is definitely said to be the best one. I did have, I already played that one a little bit here as well, too. It's basically a little heavier. It's got a little, a little um, switch here that actually opens up the door instead of just actually, you know, pulling it out like this. It actually has a little switch. You can just automatically pulls it, automatically ejects it. Um, and one of the main things too that does have a better screen on it as well too. So, but the 3000 mile model did have a few things that that one did not have, including a little spot here next to the charger where you can actually, or next to the headphone jack right here, where you can actually plug in, you know, AV cables or composite cables and hook it up to a television. You could actually play it on the TV or you could play the UMD movies as well on your television as well too. So, um, but yeah, that's like I said, this is the 3000 model. One good thing about this model here too, which I'm sure it probably is with the rest of them, but I know for sure it's this one, is that it is able to be hacked. And yes, I do have this thing hacked. Um, I have emulators, I have ROMs on here as well too. But I do still collect for the actual console as well too. If I can find a good deal on the actual UMD uh, disc, I will pick them up as well too. I have quite a few of those. I add them to my uh, retro treasure as well too. So I do indeed still collect for them, but I do put ISOs on here as well. I have a, a Game Boy Advance, a, uh, let's say a Neo Geo uh, as well too, uh, emulators on here. But the main thing I use it for is for the PSP games. Now there was a ton of great games. You know, you had God of War, you had Twisted Metal, you had some Sonic games. Um, you had several other great games on here as well too, some SSX games. Uh, I've been playing Michael Jackson Experience as well too, which is basically a rhythm style game. Um, there was Parappa the Rapper on here. Um, you know, some great uh, Tony Hawk games. The list goes on and on. You have Metal Gear, uh, you know, uh, Metal Gear games as well too. So, I mean, it's definitely got some great handful of titles, including a ton and ton and ton of RPG titles as well too, um, including Kingdom Hearts. Uh, you had a lot of great racing games, you know, Need for Speed, um, all those games. There's a Ridge Racer game as well too, and a Burnout series. They're all available right here. And like I said, pretty much any game that was available on the, on the actual, uh, to that PS2 was actually ported to this what in some fashion and definitely it ran well some games even actually look better on the actual PSP than they do on the PS2 and believe it or not I did run across a few of those as well too but I've had lots of fun playing this thing here too um, one thing that I can tell you right now is that it's pretty cheap pickling these up you can actually get these for under a hundred bucks I ran into the God of War edition uh, last night at a local disc replay and they had it there for like $64 in great shape it was a 3000 model as well too 
uh, the games aren't too bad. Like this one here was actually three ninety nine, so you can usually get them pretty good. Now once you get into the more like you know the more higher games, like you know like the uh, Metal uh, Mega Man games, the you know uh, Metal Gear games, you get into you know Kingdom Hearts. And you get into like the, uh, the Grand Theft Auto games, which uh, Liberty City Stories is awesome on this as well too. Once you get into those games, you're going to be paying a little bit more money for them, but they're still worth it. And if you can hack this and you can find ISOs now, which can be kind of hard to do since uh, you know sites like Emu Paradise and Love ROMs are gone. But if you can get those, you can actually put these on there as well too. And you have the whole library or whatnot right here. So um, now the cards here aren't expensive as they used to be, the little memory cards. Now this one here we do is this little compartment here. It does have its own little memory card. These are the memory stick duos. They're right here. This one here is actually just an adapter I got on Amazon for a little like five bucks. And I had a 64 gigabyte uh, micro SD card that I was able to actually put in here as well too. Um, if I can get it out. Yeah, but I was actually able to, you know, just simply get, get one of these and put in this little adapter and that's all you really need. Otherwise you can pick up memory card duos by themselves. They're nowhere near the cost like they used to be, and they're definitely a heck of a lot cheaper than the you know the PS or the PlayStation Vita uh, cards as well too. But personally, here I've been looking to pick up a PS Vita. It's still out there. I may still get one. Uh, definitely let me know in the comment section comment section below here whether or not it's worth me picking up a Vita because I'm definitely interested in doing that. But I've had a lot of fun with this here too, and this so so far has been one of my go-to consoles. I still play the Switch, of course, but this thing here though just has a an awesome, great. I can't say how great it is of a library of games. You got NCAA games on here, which I play NCAA, NCAA football. You got MLB The Show, which I still play as well too. Um, wrestling games, SmackDown vs. Raw. Actually, TNA Impact is actually pretty decent on here as well too. So you got a whole slew of different title games that you can actually play on the Sony PSP. Like I mentioned though as well too, it is able to be hacked. So you can also put emulators and stuff on there at your need as well too. So you know, let me know in the comment section below guys if you guys have a PSP, if it's something you're interested in, you know, definitely if, you're, if you uh, collect for it as well too, and what games maybe I should pick up that I don't have yet, because I'm definitely interested in doing that. So like I said, just sound off in the comments below and let me know what you think guys. So once again, I just wanted to go here really quick and tell you the reasons why, my reasons anyways, why I think that you should pick up a PSP and the year 2008, mainly because number one, it's portable PlayStation 2, which is one of the best consoles of all time. And the games are fairly cheap and the consoles are still fairly cheap for them as well too. And it is indeed a lot of fun. And the battery life, I have the regular battery in here, um, but it does indeed have a, um, it does indeed have a battery adapter that you can actually get on Amazon for not that much. It actually gives you uh, more volts here in the battery. This here is a 1200. I think they have like a 36 or 3800 one that you can actually get. That's going to last longer. But this one here does last about 10 hours as well too. So it definitely lasts a, a hold to charge for quite a bit of time. And plus it is a sleek looking console. I just like the way that it looks and it fits really well in the hand and the sound is very very good as well too so once again guys this has been mike with chit chat gaming and as always happy gaming